we turn now to a story of inspiration rising right out of the ashes of the World Trade Center. It's about a man marked by courage, both on and off the job. And it is about learning to treat every day as a gift to yourself and those around you. Cynthia McFadden brings us a wonderful life. June 5th, 1998. A four alarm fire in Brooklyn is raging out of control when Ladder Company 103 arrives. There are screams, someone is trapped inside, and without hesitation, Timothy Stackpole and a crew go in. Five of us were moving into the apartment towards the rear with fire rolling over our head. Moments later, the second floor collapses. Lieutenant Stackpole falls into an ocean of flames. And I remember, you know, the excruciating pain that we all felt. I mean, my legs were burning, my, my ankles, they were burned down to the bone, and I remember just praying to God, uh, you know, just let me die bravely. He thought it might be better to just take his face mask off and die quickly, says Tara Stackpole, his wife of nearly 20 years. Nobody wants to burn to death, but he felt in his heart that God wanted him to hold on. I had a tremendous sadness that I wasn't going to see my children again growing up, walking my daughter down the aisle. 30 minutes pass. Tim Stackpole trapped in that inferno before other firefighters could get him out. The burns on his legs, back, arms, a blanket of raw skin. At first, his wife thought he might die. At best, she feared, he'd never walk again. The first time they stood him on his legs, he fainted from the pain. But when he came to, he said, all right, let's do it again. I just remember grown men standing around with tears running down their faces watching him. No one, it seems, could resist Tim Stackpole's spirit. After 66 days in the Cornell Burn Center, the whole neighborhood turned out to give him a hero's welcome home. He lived every day after that, certainly, like it was a gift. It was the littlest thing was gold to him. He's the morning in the Stackpole house. And he really, and you couldn't help but feel that when you were with him, that he was enjoying life so much and he was so grateful to God for what he had in his life that you had to be too. He could have retired, could have gotten a pension. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't want it. People would say, he's not going back. And I said, yes, he is. And they'd say, well, not to the firehouse. And I said, yes, he is. But during his recovery, still too weak to return to work, Timmy Stackpole was dealt another painful blow. His mother was diagnosed with cancer. He made it his mission to take care of her. He believed he was blessed that he had that time to be with her, and he wouldn't have been able to if he was working. He put her to bed at night. He used to put her to bed at night. And they would say prayers together every night. And that was his gift to her. He took care of her. Until she died. Each man's life touches so many other lives. When he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? It didn't surprise anybody who knew Timmy that his life was beginning to echo his favorite movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And the Jimmy Stewart character, George Bailey, was starting to look more and more like him, the guy who gets a second look at his own life. I guess when he was recovering, he kept saying, I feel like George Bailey, I feel like George Bailey. You know, he, um, he was able to see how people cared about him, and, and he was able to see what he meant to people, but he's still alive. Honors came to him, a hero's honors. So, on the 10th of September, when Timmy Stackpole, newly promoted, served his first day as a captain, it wasn't just his wife and kids who gave him a hug. It was much of the city. It made the paper, September 11th, 2001. At the time, it was just a normal routine Tuesday. Um, he went off to work in the morning, kissed us goodbye, told me he loved me. Tara would hold on to those simple moments in the long hours to come. Around 8, she headed to her mother's for a cup of coffee. At the same time, Timmy reported for duty here. Things were quiet. He was headed home, but just before 9, the call started coming in. Please, 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 somebody! A fire at the World Trade Center. 
she raced home to the kids. Timmy was racing too, straight to ground zero. I stopped at a light and I looked up and I realized I was right in front of the building that he was injured in, in 1998. And I just had this awful feeling that he wasn't coming home that night. It's like a sign. Timmy's brother Michael came back from the scene covered in that soot and debris. He came to the front door and he, he told me he's gone. And I said, are you sure? And he said, everybody that saw him at the command post said he didn't have a chance. And so, in the home he loved so much, she brought together Timmy's children, her children, to tell them. I don't think I'll ever forget that pain that we all felt that night. It was awful. Um, and I don't think any kids would want to believe it, but I think my kids didn't because they saw what he came through before. And they said, oh, come on, Ma, you know Daddy. He'll get through this one, too. But this time, even Timmy Stackpole didn't make it. It took a week to find his body, buried in the rubble beneath the first tower to collapse. They told me they, they draped him in the flag. And when they turned to walk out with him, all the people at the site who had been digging stopped and kind of formed an honor guard and saluted. And it was really um, beautiful. 10,000 people came to his funeral, the mayor, the fire commissioner, and a church full of people who all felt some special connection to this one brave man, including, of course, his only daughter. She had an incredible relationship with him, all my kids too. And she said to me, she said, I guess he's not gonna be able to walk me down the aisle. And finally for Timmy, husband, father, firefighter, Parishioner, coach, teacher, and friend, we pray to the Lord. Lord to my big brother George, the richest man in town. <laughs> he always thought he was the richest man in town. And I think he would want people now to realize that it is, it is a wonderful life. Obviously, he's a hero for the way he died. But with Timmy, I think he was a hero because of the way he lived his life. And I think that's what strikes people. In death, Timothy Stackpole continues to inspire. The black and white film you saw when he was speaking, it was shot three years ago for the Cornell Burn Center, and it's gonna be featured in a public service announcement, raising money for the Twin Towers Fund. And that's it for us tonight. Don't forget, good morning, America, bright and early tomorrow. I'm Diane Sawyer, good night. And I'm Charles Gibson. From all of us here at Primetime Thursday, we thank you for joining us. Have a good night.